The following is an exclusive presentation of WI Garden Media, the voice of Garden Talk Radio. Coming up on the program today, we're going to discuss how you can build your soil for next year's garden, as well as what is algae bloom, what causes it, and what can we do to fix it. And our guest is Catherine McCord, and we'll answer your garden questions. The hour is full, and it starts right now. You are listening to the most informationally packed hour of garden-focused radio in the country and on the internet with your host, husband and wife team, Joey and Holly Baird. This is the Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show. And welcome to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happy you've taken time out of your day to join us again on the program, whether you're listening to us on one of the 18 AM and FM frequencies broadcasting our program here in 2022 through our parent website, thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, underneath the Season 6 tab at the top of the page, in-studio video replay, podcast replay, radio app, however you're doing it. Thank you very much for consuming the program. I am your host, Joy Baird. Beside me is my wife, co-host, best friend, and gardening partner, Holly Baird. This program is for you, about you, to help your garden grow better, to maintain your landscape, grow healthier trees, make your grass look greener, as well as preserving what you grow. If you want to be part of the program, besides just listening and consuming it through your ears or vision through uh, in-studio video replay, you can do that by sending us an email, gardentalkradio at gmail.com. That's gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Or you can give us a call anytime. Toll free, coast to coast, on the Proclamation Hotline, brought to you by Proclamation Good. That number is 1-800-927-SHOW, 1-800-927-7469. Proclamation Goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef. Their pans are non-toxic, have a lifetime warranty, and are made right here in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel Proclamation Duo cookware set is a 12-inch skillet and a stockpot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stockpot hinge together to form a Dutch oven. It's two pans with the versatility of 10, empowering you more to cook more with less. If you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle, then Proclamation Goods is for you. Supply is limited, so order yours now at proclamationgoods.com. As the uh, coldness comes, we are getting into the closing, if not already the close of gardening for some of you. And some of you may have had phenomenal gardens and some maybe not so much. We plan ahead for next year, which which means that we need to build our soil just because you had uh, okay or good year this year doesn't mean that the duplication will occur next year if you do nothing about it. Right. Absolutely. So one thing to keep in mind is your soil is alive. And I think it's alive. And I think many people think that it's just uh, dirt, I guess. Well, there's dirt, there's soil, yeah. there's clay. There's yeah. There, it, but it's it's a living, breathing organism. Right. There's anything from organic matter to water to air to decomposers to good bugs, bad bugs, good bugs bad bugs. And um, you might have some chemical in there, too. Fungi. Yeah. So, uh, obviously, the uh, one of the ways in which you can build your soil is simply just going to uh, and purchasing compost from I your... Have in, a, I in, have a mushroom joke. Okay, go ahead. What did, the, what, did, what did the tomato say to the mushroom after the date? What was that? You're such a fun guy, but I just don't see this going anywhere. Okay. <laughs> so, you can buy your compost from your garden center in Milwaukee. We would advi- uh, suggest to advise to use blue... Uh, ribbon organics um if other places you are residing you can do a little search of your favorite search engine and type in local compost availability in my area something of that magnitude and terminology and you just don't want to go with the first one you find you want to do a little research because anybody can make compost anybody can cut a tree down and say they're a tree guy you got to make sure you got some rep- reputation behind what you're going to your purchase Absolutely. And that is very important to think about where your compost is coming from and how how it's going to benefit your um, your plants. Right. And I bring up the compost purchasing first because obviously everybody would default to make your own, make your own, which is great. And, and we are doing what we can. We But nobody that I'm aware of 
uh, can produce the amount of compost in which in which they are needing each year in their garden. So you have to supplement it by purchasing compost from reputable sources. Right. Um, that's important to keep in mind. So you can add the compost or you can add your own home compost. Or you can add aged manure. Aged manure. Can you talk more about aged manure? Since a- aged manure um, is manure that has been sat in a pile for a minimum of six months. Minimum of six months. If you take uh, cow manure, pig manure, and put it right on the garden, it will burn the plants because it has too high of uh, the, a new nitrogen in the manure. It has to age. Now, we're not going to go through the list of rabbit and goat and, and, and camel and, and oxen and all these things of what can you put on the garden, what can't you put on the garden right away. There are some animal uh, droppings or manure in which you can apply directly right away. Others, you need to age. In addition to knowing where which type you can use, whether it's aged or can be used right away, is what did that animal eat per, per, mainly because horses and cows now are being fed grain uh, and being fed grasses 100 percent grass that the farmer has sprayed the field to make sure there's nothing but grass growing and that is a chemical that is so persistent that whenever the horse or the cow consumes it it goes through their system and does their thing and kicks out the back end and it's just about as strong as it was when it came out of the bottle that they bought it from the store um and this will intoxify or toxify your garden to the utmost damage that it's irreversible uh in a short term, it can be reversed in a very long term, very um, very precise means of remitigating the soil. Joe uh, Lampo, who was a guest last week on the program, he has went through this on his farm, on in his garden, where he got aged ca- uh, horse manure that had this persistent chemical in it that the farmer was spraying on the field to kill everything but the grass, and he... It got it when it was black soil and it destroyed and caused a lot of problems. Persistent broadleaf herbicide. Yes. Yeah. Uh, there's there's many different names under that, you know, company names, but it, it's the knowing where the source comes from. Great. The cow manure is free. The horse manure is free. Free doesn't always mean good. At what cost? Yeah, at what, yeah, cost? what cost? It, it doesn't. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, Mr. Farmer or or Lady Farmer or Man Farmer, what has your animals been eating? Because here's the problem that the horticultural industry is facing and dealing with because of these chemicals in which you are spraying on your fields to kill everything but the grass to feed your horses and cows. Absolutely. So that's something to definitely keep in mind and be aware of. Um, Killer compost is the term that you can right. look for online. Uh, you can also go to uh, our website. You can just type in uh, anything, Killer Compost, and, and Joe Lample's uh, d- uh, information will come up, and it's much more precise than what we're able to cover in a few minutes here. Right. Um, so you can also add grass clippings. And when we say grass clippings, we mean just like the persistent herbicide that is being fed to the the um, animals. Horses, animals. Yeah. There is persistent herbicides that maybe you spray on your grass. Or Weed you pay, and feed. You pay somebody else, like a, um, a lawn service person. And if you do have that, then you don't want to use those grass clippings. But if you don't spray anything on your grass, you can use your grass clippings. You want to make sure there's you know no weed seeds in there. And then also you want to let them dry a bit. If you do, again, use those grass clippings that have been treated with a weed and feed, it's going to stick to uh, even even in a compostable form. That weed and feed is still persistent enough that well, it it's a broadleaf uh, chemical, and your tomatoes, your peppers, your eggplants, all those things will suffer uh, greatly uh, in regards to that. Chemical free, seed free grass clippings, yes. Uh, shredded leaves, great. You, we add two, three foot of uh, leaves on beds or uh, raised beds, and by uh, spring they're about a eight inches to 10 inches high and by june you can't tell that we did anything because they break down and they feed the soil it's a free resource that many people are not enough people are taking advantage of 
that uh, with the, the leaves. And you can stockpile them, create your own leaf pile, and use them throughout the uh, growing season as a mulch. And you can mulch them with a lawnmower, with a leaf mulch, uh, leaf mulcher, or, and we just put them on the garden hole. True enough, now if you've got giant oak leaves, those are not going to be, uh, the water is not going to penetrate through them, and they can create a barrier to pre- prevent moisture from getting to the soil. Right. And you want to, yeah, you want to keep that in mind. Those oak leaves are um, just kind of dense and not as uh, malleable as other leaves, so you can shred them. Or you can mix them in with other leaves, whatever whatever option you have. Then there's also the option of doing a cover crop. Yes. Um, people use like soybeans or... Um, well, they'll, they'll use pie. radishes. Yeah. They'll use uh, turnips. They'll use rutabagas. They'll use multiple different uh, cover crop options. Um, rye, uh, wheat, buckwheat, uh, many different options for a cover crop. You can incorporate coffee grounds and coffee filters into your soil to help build. Now, it's not going to be, a, oh, we put uh, we had three cups of coffee yesterday and we put the coffee grounds in the garden and we're going to have a bumper crop. Coffee grounds have a very <laughs> low nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium availability in, in them, about 2% nitrogen, half percent potassium, half percent um, um, uh, potassium phosphate. And they are not acidic because that has been brewed out during the coffee making process. So if you're trying to use coffee grounds around blueberries or other acidic loving plants, it's not going to do anything. I know some people will say, well, I've done it for 87 years and I've always had a beautiful blueberry crop. There's other factors involved and I don't have time to argue with you or prove your uh, prove my point to you uh, that that is not what's going on uh, because for this instant – uh, instant science has proven and uh, tests have shown that there's no acidity in the coffee grounds. So you're doing something else to keep your blueberries alive. So uh, those are some of um, a number of very easy to, ways to go about fulfilling the task of rebuilding or adding to or keeping your soil healthy for the next growing season. You just can't walk away and go, okay, I've grown there for 38 years, never added a thing to the soil. It'll be fine next year. You got to put in what you take out. Absolutely. And as the growing season is coming to an end, many of us are now doing other things. And that might include some cooking or making some delicious meat products. And Walton's um, is our, is our uh, we're brought to you today by our sponsors, Walton's. We know you care about where your food comes from, but they have everything you need to go from animal to edible. They have equipment, seasoning, um, supplies, make sausage, jerky, any other meat product your way. If you need something for butchering or cooking in your kitchen or seasoning, Walton, if they don't have it, probably doesn't exist. And they use, they sell Excalibur seasonings, which is the exact same ones that the professional processors use. So that's, you know, readily available to you there at Walton's Inc. And then they have meatjustics.com to help educate you all on the hows and whys of meat processing, as well as a community of almost 15,000 users who will give their opinion and guidance on meat processing issues. So you can use code GROW50 to save 10% off of your orders of $50 or more and get free shipping. That's waltonsinc.com or meatgistics.com. And when we come back, we're going to discuss the uh, problem of what algae bloom is and how one may go about fixing it or can it be fixed at all. You're listening to the Guardian with Joey and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. It's time to get excited for our fall season. Tree Dash Ripe delivers the best Oregon pears, Wisconsin honey crisp apples, and Florida citrus you'll ever eat. Directly from the farm within days of being picked. Their pears and apples can be delivered directly to your home. And you can find their citrus at over 200 orange stops throughout the Midwest this winter. All the event details and ordering information can be found on their website, tree-ripe.com. And an extra bonus for you listeners, get apples and pears delivered right to your house with 10% off your purchase by using coupon code H-O-L-L-Y-1-0, HOLLY10. The discount's only available for home delivery. Pomona's Universal Pectin is a high-quality pectin that gels reliably with low amounts of any sweetener. If you're trying to reduce the amount of sugar in your diet, you'll love Pomona's Universal Pectin. Now you can make healthy homemade jams and jellies sweetened to your taste. 
You can use sugar or honey to sweeten. Bobono's Universal Pectin keeps indefinitely when stored in an airtight container. Easy to use, versatile, and comes with directions and recipes in every box. Find out more and where to buy at PomonaPectin.com. Also available at natural food stores and online. Are you seeing fruit flies in your kitchen? Fruit flies love a fall harvest. They hitch a ride into your house on the fresh veggies and fruits you are picking. Break the breeding cycle with fruit fly traps from Rescue. Rescue fruit fly traps are reusable and an economical way to keep fruit flies at bay. They're the only trap with a no-spill design, and only the Rescue fruit fly traps are made in the USA. Learn more about them at rescue.com. That's R-E-S-C-E-U dot C-O-M. Take the guesswork out of composting with hot bin composting. Quickly break down food scraps within 30 to 90 days. Find out more at hotbincomposting.com. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following Pro Plugger, Chip Drop, Bell Buster, Johnny Appleseed, Ivy Organic, Milkweed Balm, Waltons Incorporated, Bloomin' Easy Plants, Jung Seeds. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly radio show. Happier with this. Falls here, Holly. Garden's about done. Watering has been an issue for many gardeners throughout, not this year, but years and years because we forgot, said we won't forget, we fought, we did forget. Tree diaper takes the guesswork out of it. Absolutely. If your plants could talk or could t- could have talked, they may have said that, you know, maybe they weren't being properly watered, either too much, too little. How do you water properly? You can take the guesswork out by using the tree diaper. Tree diaper is a revolutionary way to water your plants that stabilizes soil moisture by taking up excess water and slowly releases it when the plants need it. The tree diaper is filled with water from the rain or when you water and slowly releases water over three weeks. No pipes, hoses or electricity needed. Whether you're a first-time gardener or advanced, Tree Diaper will improve the way you water your plants. Made in the USA, you can find out all the sizes they have available at TreeDiaper.com. That is TreeDiaper.com. Well, when I uh, tease the uh, hold on for the break, we're going to talk about algae bloom. I know some of you who understand what algae bloom is probably were yelling at the radio or your podcast device going, well, that's a big, that's a big farmer industry problem. That's not a backyard gardening industry uh, problem. I, I'm not contributing to algae bloom, Holly, but I think if we use anything, even if it's not a visible, oh, well, we still have done something to encourage the use of and the cause of what's going on. Absolutely. And it, it is a, it is a problem for, all of us because it does affect aquatic life and it also it's not sightly to look at joey and i were visiting his family and we stopped at the uh what was that city lake the city lake and i said look at all this algae bloom and that's what inspired this topic topic. and it it took away from the beauty of that park the park was a very nice park and and algae bloom is just like ugh. So, so, so yeah. what is algae bloom? And, and let's get w- to the point of why does it exist or what's causing it to exist? Sure. So algae bloom, you you kind of probably have seen it. It looks like this green, um, like a, a light green murkiness just floating on the top of the water, usually near like a shoreline of some sort, whether it be a lake or um, even the ocean. But a lot of times it ends up in like the, the bay areas. So just along the shoreline kind of. And what happens is that it can look like a foam or a scum. And it sometimes it's different colors, but up around here, it's usually about greenish. And it's from runoff, from chemical runoff. And what happens is, especially with something like nitrogen, from whether it be farms, golf, lawn, golf lawn courses, off, yeah, lawn off applications, um, things like that, it feeds the algae and the algae just grows, essentially. Which that lake that we talked about, a good portion of that lake was completely covered in algae bloom in the green slime. The reason why it damages or kills aquatic life is twofold. One, it creates a barrier from preventing the, the, the fish from getting and eating things that are landing on top of the water. 
and it doesn't what is it it doesn't allow oxygenization to occur right. and suffocates the 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 aquatic life out and we're not t- talking fish we're talking snails and and uh, snakes and other things everything that you don't see frogs all these things it has a effect to it Correct. And you might think, okay, you know, this is this is a newer issue or I don't live by a pond. I don't live by a lake. Yeah, we can't. Uh, Or just think that this this isn't a a now issue. Right. But what happens is that this has actually been occurring. There's been talk about um, algae bloom from late from the 1500s. So it's been a thing. Um, and it just keeps. It typically getting... occurs more prevalent in the spring during the r- first rain runoff right. of all the land, and then we see a big bloom of it, what they call a bloom, a big explosion of growth in Lake Michigan, uh, in the local news where we're at. But also we hear it about the other uh, Great Lakes, and then the you know you got the Mississippi River issue down by the Louisiana, the dead zone down there, and just little lakes, yes, like your city lake. So, yeah, um, and it also can be harmful if you swim in it. It can get on your skin. It can cause, you know, if you have sensitive skin, it can cause issues like that. If you're if you like to let your pets run in the water, things like that. um, Well, I assume that if it's thick enough, you can impede your potential mobility in the water and could cause issues of uh, droundage um, in some Right. Common sense thinking here. Wait, go ahead. So there's a few different ways that it can be controlled. But the biggest thing is, is that as a as a homeowner, gardener, et cetera, is to use chemicals sparingly. Because everything that you use, a lot of times, especially if it's a high chemical based fertilizer, herbicide, fungicide, whatever, that clings to water molecules. And the water molecules go, drains into the sewer system and the sewer system runs off into a lot of times big body water. And we've seen this on TV and sometimes in person where they're fertilizing the lawn and the way it goes down the sidewalk and on the street and it's just a, a Mach 4 to get the job done to get to the next one for money, money, money. And that's that's what their job is. As quick as you can get out of the truck, get out of the truck, spread the fertilizer, get in the truck and keep moving because we've got jobs to do. And uh, environmental um, requirements or rules kind of get pushed to the side because money rules. Right. And then if you go to a golf course and you, you know, see that they're using high amounts of chemicals, maybe consider talking to the person who runs the golf course. And if there's an alternative or maybe you live on a golf course. Right. Well, or something. And, 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 you know, I'm going to stereotype this, but people, there are certain places in America where country clubs have golf courses and it's the people that have the deepest pockets get to tell what what to do and how to do it and tells everybody else to keep quiet about it. Right. But maybe you have the friend with the deep pockets and they're well, yeah, you know, you want to you want to express your concern and um, you can uh, bring them some tomatoes and zucchini if they can talk to the uh owner of the golf course i don't know but we want to but, bring this to the yeah. forefront because we we see it now which if we're seeing it in the fall it can only mean it's going to be more intense in the spring absolutely and but there's it, different things to control the algae bloom or attempt to one of them which is kind of interesting is ultrasound and what it does is um it's safe for aquatic life and it can it can work on medium and large bodies of water and then it can um, it can predict and prevent the the blooms. And there has there are um, organic me organic products in which you can it's a powder you can spray or hand sprinkle that will kill the algae bloom as well. Okay, um, so that's that's an option too. Um, but also that you know you're you're. Using something, an organic, it's still a chemical, even though it's organic, it's still a chemical. That's just the way the, the makeup of it is. It doesn't, when it's organic, it doesn't have the severity of some of the non organic chemicals. Um, so your, your problem is caused by A. So you're using product B to fix problem A. There's still a problem. Right. And that's, you know, all of this, uh, any solution is either going to have, you know, advantages, disadvantages, going to take time, space, money, resources, what have you. 
And so, yes, there are options. There's like aer- aerating the the body of water. Um, there's things of like swirling the water effectively just cu- just because like if you a lot of times in the ocean, it's in the Gulf areas. It's in the areas where the, the water's stagnant, more stagnant, stagnant yeah. right? So have ag- agitation, have um, something that will aerate the soil, or aerate the soil, aerate the water to get oxygen in there. So the the premise or the basis is algae bloom, algae bloom occurs because of an abundance of nitrogen, either in liquid form or granular, that has attached itself to water and then found itself into some form of a basin, river, or pond, or lake, and then it's settled to the bottom, and then it's done its chemical thing and caused the algae bloom, the excessive nitrogen, to feed the, uh, the, the stuff that's in the water and create this green slime that's on top. Right. And again, I think the biggest thing here is to be be mindful about what you yourself are doing, your impact. There's instructions for a reason. Right. Um, so if you are adding something to your grass, soil, lawn, whatever, think about, you know, oh, more is better. No, you want to you want to follow the instructions. You want to be mindful. Well, goodness, more is not better now because it's twice as much. Three times as much now, so you got to cut back twice half as much as you're going to use just to get by. Right, and just just like you know, Joy and I enjoy living in harmony with our ecosystem. Um, you can do the same, and you can be mindful of your impact as how it literally like runs down the road into the sewer. So um, that is algae bloom. What causes it? Why it happens? And some things in which we can do to limit the effects of the uh, products in which we use. Well, Holly, night time's uh, getting colder. Days are getting, day length is getting shorter. Not the day. The day is still 24 hours. It's just getting darker sooner because of things are adjusting the way the earth tilts. People often say, oh, days are getting shorter. As far as I know, they were still 24 hours. They mean daylight. I know. You, you, you didn't describe it very well the other day <laughs> whenever you said, days are getting shorter. No, still 24 hours in a day. Uh, but uh, even though it's getting darker sooner, the lawn still needs some help before winter comes. Yeah, just because it's lawn or fall, we don't want to forget about our yards and those Japanese beetles either. They may be gone, but they're not far. They feasted on your roses and berries this summer. They laid eggs in your turf so that they can start again next year. Take a stand with Phylum's Grub Gone. Grub Gone is a non-chemical BT granule that specifically targets scarab pests and their larvae. Simply apply the granule with a spreader, irrigate it into the soil, and let it, the naturally occurring bacteria do its job. Not only is Grub Gone easy to use, but the it's the only non-chemical choice that effectively controls grubs And the best part about it, it's non-toxic to bees, butterflies, and other beneficial insects. So go to Grub, get your Grub gone. Uh, It has no label restrictions uh, for flowers or anything like that. It's safe to use. So go to BeetleGone.com. That's BeetleGone.com to get your Grub gone. And when you go to BeetleGone.com to get your Grub gone, use coupon code GARDENTALK10 to save 10% on your order and your lawn will thank you well hang out with us when we come back Catherine mccord will be with us you're tuned in to the gardening with joy and holly radio show have a garden question give joey and holly a call now or anytime 24 7 just dial 1-800-927-SHOW if you can't get through leave a message and they will call you back call now 1-800-927-SHOW Gutter Scent is an easy-to-use rain gutter cleaning tool made of angled tongs that help you safely clean your gutters from the ground. No more ladders needed. Stay safe on the ground. Visit Guttersense.com. Do you have nuts or fruit in your yard? A nut wizard is a handy, effective tool that will pick up round or oval tree produce quickly and easily, leaving debris behind for a clean harvest. A nut wizard tool saves your back and your time. Visit nutwizard.com for more information. This week's garden tip is sponsored by the amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. 
White flies on your tomatoes is bad news. They will suck the nutrients from your tomato plants, which will quickly become weak and may not be able to carry out photosynthesis. Leaves will wilt, turn pale or yellow. The plant will become more prone to diseases. Growth will be stunted and the production of tomato fruit will suffer. A simple way to eliminate them is with spraying the Amazing Dr. Zymes Eliminator at a rate of one ounce per quart of water. When you spray on soft-bodied insects, it kills them. Dr. Zymes is OMRI listed, safe up to the day of harvest, and doesn't leave a residue. That helpful garden tip was sponsored by the Amazing Dr. Zymes. Eliminate and prevent garden pests with their 100% all-natural, all-in-one insecticide and fungicide. Experience powerful natural protection from insects, fungus, mold, and mildew. Try a free sample. Visit drzymes.com forward slash garden talk. Hey gardeners, it's that time of growing season, so let's start canning. Head over to Fleet Farm for all of your canning supplies and jam mixes. In one easy stop, find everything you need, like jars, lids, canners, strainers, racks, spatulas, and funnels from top brands like Ball & Kerr. Plus, pick up mixes, sugar, and more. When it comes to canning, get everything you need at your canning headquarters, Fleet Farm. With the right tools, plant maintenance is easy and more effective. Ironwood Tool Company has the right tools for your project. From pruners to loppers to saws and shears and cleanup tools, get the right tool for this season, making your job much easier. Find them all at ironwoodtools.com. Are you bugged by bugs? You need naturally green products, no more bugs. Environmentally friendly, made in the USA. No More Bugs is a cedar blend that repels and eliminates mosquitoes, ticks, fleas, roaches, and ants, and more. No Bugs is safe for you, your pets, and plants. Visit natgreenproducts.com. You can enter promo code GREENTHUMB10 for 10% off your purchase of any size of No More Bugs. Protect your plants from damage with the 3-in-1 Plant Guard and Special Blend Fertilizer. Visit ivyorganics.com. Use promo code RADIO10 to save 10% off your order. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joe and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com, and click on the Money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Gardening with Joey and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following. Rootmaker, Dripworks, Pomona Universal Pectin, Phylum Bioproducts, Tree Diaper, Chapin Manufacturing Incorporated, Deer Defeat, Water Hoop. Find all sponsors at thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Gardening with Joy and Holly Radio Show. Catherine McCord, moments away, but first, Simple Grow, a product that will feed your plants, let your plants grow, and let them grow healthier and happier. Are you worried about your plant growth? Provide your plants with what they need to grow to their potential with Simple Grow. They offer 100% organic worm castings at simplegrow.com. Unlike other worm casting products, when you order from Simple Grow, you're getting 100% worm castings, not filler plus castings. Promote ideal soil structure and aeration with Simple Grow all natural odor free worm castings. There's only one ingredient worm castings. No chemicals, additives will seep into your food, and it doesn't smell like other fertilizers. For indoor and outdoor use, you can buy by the bag, bundle, ton, or truckload. Check them out at simplegrow.com. Holly, let's go to the Proclamation Hotline brought to you by Proclamation Goods and bring in our guests for this week. Catherine McCord is the recipient of the 2020 American Horticultural Society's Great American Gardener in Horticultural Therapy Award. She is a mindfulness and wellness guide with training in the Hatha yoga tradition, horticultural therapy, and trauma-sensitive mindfulness. With advanced degrees in biochemistry and landscape architecture, she blends together the benefits of outdoor spaces with self-care practices to regulate the nervous system. She facilitates trauma-sensitive mindfulness, yoga, and self-care sessions for the veterans to Farmer's Market Farming Program. Welcome to the program, Catherine. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Well, I want to start with this. What is horticultural therapy? So horticultural therapy is uh, a technique that it's a uh, therapeutic modality that uses plant-based activities to support people socially, physically, emotionally, or vocationally. Okay. Okay. Um, and so with that being said, what led you to using mindfulness, wellness guidance, 
Um, and then even the, um, the, you know, making a outdoor space for the self care practice in regards to the veterans to farmers field. So this is a really important question for me. Thank you for asking. I actually, when I was a kid, lost my father to suicide and he was a veteran in the Navy. And so I was looking for a way to, like, I wanted to make him proud, but I came across this book called Man's Search for Meeting by Viktor Frankl. And in that book, they talk about um, using your struggles and your suffering to support others. And so I learned about therapeutic gardens and landscapes and wanted to create spaces that would facilitate healing. And through that, I learned about horticultural therapy and kind of went on my own healing journey of what kind of practices support me best. Like I do a lot of meditation. I do yoga, studying yoga philosophy, became a yoga teacher and learned how to pull in you know, plants and the therapeutic uses of them through medicine and really connect back with the earth and wanted to be able to offer this to other veterans. Because as we know, our veteran population struggles a lot with um, integrating into civilian life after leaving service and things that they experience while they're in service. Well, we are sorry to hear about your, your father's situation there. Um, tell us about the the farmer, the the veterans to farmers that that program and and how how that is benefiting the veterans coming out of the service. Yeah, the veterans to farmers programs helps veterans transition in their civilian life, and I work with the market gardening program. So it's a twenty week program from May through October, and we. Um, help veterans learn about what it's like to to work on a farm and what it's like to start your own farm. So we start in May, they they plan their garden, they get to plant in it. We also go on a lot of farm tours and visit other farms in the area, in the Denver area, to see how how does it look and how how it works for different people. And so they get a lot of exposure to different types of agriculture. And in the program, we also do a lot of self-care and they learn different tools and techniques that may work or may not work. And it's kind of just trying to see what, what works for you. And we start each day with stretching and checking in. And then we close each session with reflections on what we've learned throughout the day. Now, whenever these veterans come out of the service, I'm going to take a guess here that many of them don't have an agricultural background and they know the purpose and what you're doing to help them in the therapy aspect? Are they aware of all of that and are looking forward to get that help? So I am not a therapist. Okay. So horticultural therapy is the certificate that I have, but I am not an actual therapist. And I think that actually makes things a lot more approachable mm -hmm. for participants. And to be completely honest, not all of them are on board with, okay. with um, therapy, right? So th that is still really stigmatized. And when I come in and I say, I'm not a therapist, I will not be evaluating you. I'm not prescribing anything for you. It really helps make this more approachable. And I simply offer techniques. And if they want to try them, that they're welcome to, and they always have the option to decline. Um, so there's no forced, like, you know, we're not making them do any of these things, but they're always welcome to kind of feel it out and see if it feels right for them. And something that we, we say daily is, you know, what feels right for you right now in this moment, because it could change. And if you decide that maybe this isn't right for you right now, you're welcome to take a step back. And then if you change your mind, you're always welcome to come back and join in. So the focus is on farming and then the self-care tools and techniques are supplemental to that. And so in addition to, you know, the mindfulness techniques and the yoga we do, we also bring in chefs to learn about how to cook the, the food that you're growing. So really self-care is about you know, the whole person and taking care of the whole. Self. So after the 20 week um, gardening, uh, I'm going to call it a class for better lack of a better term. Once they have completed that, what is their next step or, or what platform does that provide for them to go to? 
So they have, uh, they're now connected to the Veterans to Farmers, I guess, family. So they're con- they have the opportunity to connect with past participants and meet them. And really is a community building aspect. And whether or not they decide to go on to farming is totally up to them because sometimes they don't learn that farming isn't what they want to do, but there are kind of farming adjacent careers you could go into or things that are connected to agriculture, or they might find that that was really great to learn about, but it's not quite for them. And the classes are free to veterans. And then for this particular program, they're all offered a stipend to participate to help offset any costs of travel or, you know, taking time off work to attend this. That's amazing. So we're talking with Catherine McCord. Um, She is a mindfulness and wellness guide with Veterans to Farmers Market Farming Program. So what has the impact been since the program has been founded in 2014? How has Veterans to Farmers made a difference um, throughout these last eight years? It's really about the community building. I mean, it's first about farming. That's kind of the avenue to, to get people together. The slogan is from protectors to providers. A lot of our veterans are interested in food security and providing food access. The impact that we're seeing is that it's really restoring agency into a lot of their lives. It's giving them opportunities and options and choices that they get to make and see how they can support their communities and support themselves. And I, I'm, I, for those who have never been in the service, and Holly and I have not, we do not understand the transition or what the veterans, when they served, what they went through during war or non-war times to come out of that and then go back into society. And many people in society just figure, oh, you're just supposed to just, thanks for your service, now get back to normal life. That just doesn't happen. Right, because when you're in the service, you really, your agency is kind of stripped from you. You're told when to be somewhere, what to wear, how to wear, when to eat, what to eat, right? You're not making a lot of choices for yourself oftentimes. So it can be difficult to make that transition out of it. And then there are so many things that folks are exposed to and that they can come out with, with, you know, like complex post-traumatic stress disorder or, you know, anxiety, depression, or veteran suicide rate is still very high. So there's a lot that there there could be better support for, right? And it's really, I've observed or people have shared things like just the grocery store can actually be really activating and really difficult. Mm -hmm. And so to think about, you know, how do we, support how what ways in what ways can we support and a lot of it um i like to offer bite-sized pieces of support so something like if i say well why don't you try to meditate for 10 minutes a day that can be really disempowering that can be really daunting and people you know even myself included like can't always find 10 minutes so if we introduce exercises like breathing exercises or just noticing how you're breathing or the quality of your breath can really help shift your nervous system and can help regulate and help you to self-regulate. Because when you're in these situations that your body is telling you you're not safe, but you have to be there because that's what your orders are, you start to distrust your body. You start to build this disconnect and it's, it's not, um, it's not intentional, but it's what your body does. It's how your body adapts to survive. So when you come out and you are in a safe place, you might not feel safe because you've learned to distrust your, your body or your brain has subconsciously. So, you know, I, I asked our group this morning, you know, what, what self-care things have you, have you really stuck to, or what do you really like about, you know, anything that you might've learned here? And a lot of folks talked about our breathing practices and our breathing exercises. So just something little that you're doing anyway, right? If you can just bring a little bit more attention to it or attention to it and notice how it's 
driving, you can really help self-regulate. Well, what is one of your favorite or, or maybe most memorable moments working with the Veterans to Farmers uh, program? It's always really great to see how excited they get when they start to see their little seedlings pop up, the little cotyledons, or harvesting something that they've never seen. You know, um, a lot of people have never seen like a carrot grow up um, and to see like the little shoulder popping up out of the dirt and then they can harvest it. I guess I should say soil Um, and they get to harvest it and see like, Oh my gosh, I've only seen this at the grocery store. I've never really seen this growing out of the earth. It's really great to watch them notice that and then try it and notice how good it tastes. Fantastic. And I, I think um, I would have to agree that that's probably really, fun moments to, to witness and um, and see. So we really have appreciated having you on the show. How, how can people find out more about you and the Veterans to Farmers program? So you can go to veteranstofarmers.org to learn more about the different programs that we offer. I'm on LinkedIn at Catherine McCord. And then I have a, um, I've done some recorded short bite-sized mindfulness and meditation practices through Denver Botanic Gardens YouTube channel. And it's the playlist is called Mindfulness in Bloom. Well, Catherine, we greatly appreciate the knowledge and the information that Holly and I have obtained, as well as our listeners, just in the short period of time. Um, we're talking about this program that many people may not have known existed. And we thank you for that. Yeah, I'm really happy to share this with you. Well, thank you for that. And when we come back, it's your garden questions, our garden answers. You're tuned in to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Got a question for Joey and Holly? Send it via email anytime to gardentalkradio at gmail.com. Jung Seed Company is a family-owned and operated gardening company since 1907 with the largest selection of seeds and plants online. Use code 10 10- TG22 to receive 10% off your order at jungseed.com. That code again is 10TG22. Chip Drop is a website you can sign up for free wood chip mulch delivery right to your door. For free, Chip Drop connects homeowners and gardeners with tree services who are trying to get rid of their wood chips. You can also sign up to get free logs and firewood. Go to chipdrop.com to learn more and sign up for a free account. Rootmaker starts your plants off right and keeps them going through harvest. From their seed starting trays with an innovative design that air prunes the roots to their large variety of grow bags, 1 to 60 gallons. Their products will provide you with the harvest that you've never seen before. Visit rootmaker.com and use coupon code RADIO22 to save 15% off your order. That's rootmaker.com. Brought to you by Blue Ribbon Organics, providing locally made organic compost and soil blends for gardens, farms, landscaping, and more. Visit BlueRibbonOrganics.com or call 262-497-8539 to find their products nearest you. When winter hits with heavy snowfall and frigid temperatures, your outdoor furniture takes a beating. What you need to do is cover it with custom protective covers from CoversAndAll.com. They have a bunch of waterproof tear and abrasion resistant fabrics to choose from. And each cover is made with waterproof stitching. Covers and All has a lot of customization options, incredibly easy design and order process to make covering any size or shape a snap. Visit CoversAndAll.com and use code GARDEN25 at checkout to save 25% off your purchase. Thanks for listening to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. As you've heard through the program, many companies offering coupon codes to help you save on great products. If you've missed any of those coupon codes, you can go to our parent website, the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com, and click on the money tab at the top of the page, and they're all listed for you. The Garden with Joy and Holly radio show is brought to you by the following Tree Ripe, Covers in All, Ironwood Tool Company, Timber Pro Coatings, Blue Ribbon Organics, Natural Green Products, Algae Men, Dr. Zine, Happy Leaf LED, Rescue, Big Tool Rack, Hot Bin Composting, Proclamation Goods. Find all sponsors at the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener.com and thank them for their support. Welcome back to the Garden with Joy and Holly radio show. Thank you for being with us for the show. 
got a more we got time to the top of the hour for your garden questions our garden answers if you want to be a part of that send us an email gardentalkradio at gmail.com gardentalkradio at gmail.com or you can give us a -a ring-a-ding-ding on the proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods that number toll free coast to coast 1-800-927-SHOW 1-800-927-7469 proclamation goods creates cookware for the eco-conscious home chef their pans are non-toxic have a lifetime warranty and are made right in Wisconsin. Their award-winning stainless steel proclamation dual cookware set doubles as a 12-inch skillet and a four uh, a stock pot that doubles as a wok. Best of all, the skillet and stock pot hinge together to form a Dutch oven and two pans with the versatility of 10, empowering you to cook more with less if you care about your health and strive for a more sustainable lifestyle. Proclamation Goods is for you. You can find out more at Proclamation goods.com number again 1-800-927-SHOW or garden talk radio at gmail.com holly the first question is sponsored by fleet farm and fleetfarm.com and it goes as follow what about feeding disease plant material to chickens or to goats or uh, uh and have them compost it when they eat it is there anything wrong with that well sort of It really comes down to, can the animal in which you are feeding whatever item to, diseased or not, can they consume such an item? Like, for example, chickens uh, can only eat certain plant material. It will kill them. It's not safe for them to eat other material. Uh, If chickens or goats, uh, whether it's diseased or not, um, then, you know, if it's diseased and they can't eat it, then a no. Um, If they can... It would be depend on whether the plant's diseased and say for the animal chickens cannot eat tomato leaves or green tomatoes. So if you're going to feed them late blight tomatoes or early blight tomatoes, you're going to kill the chickens. So it goes to the point of a lot of research on your end should or can the animal eat such item. And if they can, then can they eat such item that has diseased um, plant stuff on it so uh i don't know if that just be careful what you're feeding your chickens and goats or cows or pigs or whatever you are consu- uh, giving them all right holly, a phone call yeah let's go to the proclamation hotline brought to you by proclamation goods dave who is listening to us on uh the word cleveland whkw at 12 20 a.m and 96.9 fm has a question for us my name's dave um wondering if you it looks like Next week, I'm going to be on the go, out of town. Don't think I'll be able to listen to the show. Do you guys have any kind of audio archives I could um, tune back to, you know, after Saturday of next week? If so, how do you access that? If you could tell me about apple trees. Um, I got an apple tree um, across the street at a, at a city bus stop and then one in the backyard. They've always put out apples. This year, they're not having any apples at all, like nothing. I was just wondering if you guys knew what that was for. Is it because it was dry this year or when, when you know, there's a dry weather? Does that make the apple tree kind of recoil and not make fruit? All right. Well, Dave, we thank you for calling in. And uh, there are archives ab- available. You go to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener dot com um, and they are listed there in full show. I've got to update the segment portion of that. I've kind of got behind on that with other projects we've got going on with the show here and for next year. But they're all go under the re- uh, season six tab at the top of the page. They are all in chronological order, as well as if you miss a show, you can send us an email to garden talk radio at gmail.com and we will send you a link to said program that you've missed. And Holly, with the apple trees, there's a couple of variables that uh, will determine whether or not the tree is going to fruit or not. And uh, we, there, there, it's, there's not a hard answer here, but there's several possibilities. Right. So one thing is that if if it was too cold at the time when the tree was blooming, it might not it might not put apples on. So if you had a delicate balance there, and or there's a delicate balance there, and if it's not the right conditions and it's too cold and those blooms come out and maybe they don't come up fully or whatever, so they freeze off. They freeze yeah. off. 
Um, that's we, a problem. We, and that's the problem uh, down south and uh, with a lot of, the, well, a lot of the peach growers that, boy, we get warm spring and then we get a hard cold snap and they've got to build fires and rent helicopters to keep the air circulating around the peach trees because to, it's cheaper to pay a couple of helicopters to fly around all night than to lose the whole peach crop for the year. So if it gets too cold, it will freeze those buds off. Right. Another thing could be lack of pollination. Um, so then that if there's a major lack of pollination for those apple trees, um, then it's not, they're not going to have the, the fruity. Right. Thank so, you for the question, uh, Dave. Thank you for listening. And, uh, uh, well, glad you do. Uh, glad you listen. Where do I find good hard neck garlic, Holly? You can go to jung com. That's J U N G C.com to use code 10 T G 22. The number 1010, T like Tom, G like George, or The Garden 22 to save 10% off your order. Um, so, yeah. There you go. Uh, hi there. I planted some sweet potatoes, uh, some from the grocery store and some from an Asian market that I think were UBE purple sweet potatoes. I just harvest them and ended up with a big tub full. My question is... Do the purple ones need to be cured? And I used a very large glass fish tank with grow lights and uh, some plastic domes. I uh, uh, hope to try to grow cooking herbs in it. Well, that would work for the cooking herbs. And congratulations, you grew sweet potatoes. Um, with any sweet potato, if, if you're going to use it right away, you don't need to cure it, Holly. If you're going to have long-term storage, then yes, you will want to cure it. Curing process for potatoes is typically a couple of weeks at 85 uh, degrees Fahrenheit with 90 to 90 percent hum relative humidity uh, for four to seven days. Now, I know it, we all don't have precise environments in our homes for this, but this is what you, the best curing um temperature is after curing reduce storage temperature to 55 to 60 and fahrenheit to 80 to 85 percent relative humidity and uh, your uh, your sweet potatoes will be fine now holly we've thrown sweet potatoes in every nook and cranny before and they've done quite well just being in a crock with an open lid in the corner of the kitchen so yeah if you're you know i, I think this is more kind of if you've got a whole field full of sweet potatoes this might be a good plan to to prolong the shelf life on them. But if you've just got a few, uh, just put them uh, in your kitchen in the proper place. I wouldn't put them in the fridge. I would keep them under a cabinet um, in, in a, you know, an air circulated area of your kitchen. All right. Uh, I have, here we go. I have several pickle buckets that I purchased. I have washed them very well, but can't get the pickle smell out of them. Can I still plant in them next spring, or do you think this will cause problems for my plants? You can absolutely plant in them. You want to um, drill some holes in the bottom, especially along the sides. Um, you know, every, uh, I don't know, like probably like eight holes in the bottom along the side of it. And yeah, then you can put your soil in there, compost, potting soil mix, whatever you got, and you can absolutely grow on them. It's not going to affect the plants at all uh, again those were pickle buckets for food grade plastic not plastic is plastic to some people but uh, if you're getting hydraulic oil for your uh, john deere tractor and you've got a five gallon bucket after that it may not be the best choice to use to grow your tomatoes your peppers your eggplants in because that oil has infused into the bucket and so it's not food grade yes go ahead as a rule of thumb if it's something that edible that, yes that you are going that came in the bucket container uh tub, even though it's plastic tub yeah, yeah even though it's plastic it was something that is safe for human consumption and dog or cat consumption right <laughs> because they get the, the well, plastic square tubs of yeah, cat food or cat, dog food yeah or, now what yeah. what would what would you say on the big tubs of cat litter or it, would you recommend even after you wash and scrub them out would you I, say the cat litter is okay to use that it, bucket or not i think if it was unscented cat litter would be okay because these are just like clay okay then, right okay but if it's scented and then you infused still, in yeah, that plastic it's, it's like perfumed yeah, yeah. I would avoid that. But if it's something that, you know, you can eat, your pets can eat, et cetera, you can use those buckets. If it's something like Joy, Joy said, like the oil or I don't know, like industrial something or another, even just like maybe you are a crafter and you have like buckets of paint or glaze or something like that. Don't use that. 
just use something that is is safe um just keep that in mind well with that being said we are out of time and we thank you for yours did you miss any portion of the program today or would like to revisit it you can do that by going to your favorite search engine and typing in the gardening with joy and holly radio show or you can go to our parent website the wisconsin vegetable gardener.com and clicking on the radio six tab at the top of the page or send us an email garden talk radio at gmail.com and we will send you a link to the show that you missed uh Tune in next week to the program. We will be discussing hedges, what you may want to look at in hedge-wise and ones you may want to avoid, as well as fall bulb planting. And our guest is author Julie Demicus, and we'll answer your garden questions. So until next week for Holly Baird, I'm Joy Baird, and we will see you in the garden. Mm-hmm.